Hello, I made a solenoid engine out of Lego and it works like this. Well, I got I can't run it for too long because one, it's loud, and two, it will literally pull itself apart. Hello, all, I'm Josh, it's Josh Build Stuff. Today, we built the Lego Solenoid Engine. It is not my own creation. This is from Curiosity Box. That is uh, Vsauce's YouTube channel. You may be familiar with it. Michael Stevens runs the thing. They sold this very cool custom Solenoid Engine Lego kit. It's not official Lego pieces, but it's Technic, so it works just as well as the real thing. What's a Solenoid Engine? Well, this is, basically, it's an engine created using solenoids, solenoids being electromagnets that pull pistons that turn a camshaft and that in turn turns a big flywheel and makes all these cool unique gears turn. This is a $150 custom Lego kit. My wife got this for me for Christmas. It's a fantastic present. I'm not reviewing this in the sense of whether or not it's a good set or kit or whether or not it's cool. It is. If you're interested in this kind of thing, absolutely get it. I think you'll like it a lot. This one was $150. I think there's a $200 version which comes with a bunch of extras and even more cool gears that I don't have here. This one's just fine for my little brain. The kit itself is very cool. It's very well packaged in this nice black box. The contents on the inside also well packaged not only does it come with all of the technic type pieces that you will need to build this it also comes with some custom pieces like a very cool heavy brass flywheel a couple of the electromagnets themselves and then some custom gears which we'll get into in a second i think this is still available to purchase at the time i'm making this video i'll leave a link to this in the description down below it's not an ad i'm not sponsored or anything i just think it's very cool and i wanted to share it with you the fun part how does this thing actually work well i think my friend professor jay is a little more qualified to explain it so i'll let him do the talking professor Hi, I'm Professor J. Yeah, Professor J is just Josh with a cardigan and glasses. That's better. Solenoid engines, how do they work? Well, I learned this about 20 minutes ago. Now I'm teaching you because that's how the world works. This is a flywheel. We want it to turn. How do we get that to turn? Well, we have two electromagnets. We need to give charge to one and then the other and then the one and then the other. When we give a charge to an electromagnet, it causes a magnetic field and that pulls whatever's in the middle of it. In this case, a piston with a magnet on top. It pulls that piston upward and then we alternate that charge and we give it to the other solenoid instead. And that makes the piston that was just up go down and the other piston go up. Because those pistons are both attached via connecting rods to the same crankshaft, well, when those pistons alternate up and down, that turns that axle and that turns that flywheel and that turns all the rest of our gears. The fun part is, the innovative part is, the part that I was confused about when building this set is that on the other side of that camshaft, there are a couple of custom cams on there though, these little orange pieces. And what those do as that axle turns, it actually forces the contact points away from each other and then back together and then away from each other and then back together, causing that alternation between one electromagnet and the other. That part was, again, very tricky to put together, but once it's working, it's working. And you can even see the little spark happening in there while this thing runs. I haven't actually tested if you can get shocked by completing that circuit with, say, your own finger, but I am a professor, so I guess maybe I should? Let's see. Wait, no, ow, no, ow, ow. No, I don't think I'm being shocked. I think I'm just being pinched by the connector. Maybe it's not enough voltage. Maybe I'm not a good conductor. That's why I don't drive trains anymore. In short, current is given to one electromagnet that pulls the piston one way. Then current is taken away from that electromagnet and given to the other. That pulls the piston that way. As those pistons go up and down, that causes the crankshaft to turn. That causes everything to turn. And we get some very cool gears that turn as a result of that crankshaft. Regular Josh, you're up. This sweater is warm. Hi, I'm back. Check out these gears. Not only do we get this entire solenoid engine, all these are also little custom gears. We get elliptical gears, which don't look like they should work, and yet nice, smooth, continuous motion with those. We get my favorite Nautilus gears. They're called that because they look like uh, Nautilus shells, not a Nautilus submarine, but we'll get there someday. Those are cool because they go faster. 
as uh, the gear is small and then they slow down, slow down, slow down as the gear gets wider and then they go fast again and then slow down, slow down, slow down and they go fast again. I'll try to get some slow-mo footage of these and throw it in here. And then we have up top here, what's that little guy called? This fellow is called a Geneva mechanism which turns continuous rotational energy into intermittent rotational energy. That's fun, right? The bottom wheel turns continuously and the top one only turns every once in a while. Also sometimes called a Maltese cross mechanism because um, I'm assuming it's named after the Maltese dog. We had a Maltese growing up. Her name was Cindy. Uh, she lived a very long time, so I'm gonna call this a Cindy cross mechanism. Also, you'll notice I'm turning the flywheel with my finger because if I turn it uh, on, the whole thing goes uh, fast. A little hard to see at these speeds and here. And as long as I hold the electromagnets, I'm not afraid of this thing shaking itself apart. Also, there are rubber strips that they give you. You can put along the bottom of the whole thing to stop it from wiggling around quite as much. But if I let this thing go for long enough, um, I feel like it will shake itself apart. I'm not gonna allow that to happen for the sake of the video, but that'd be pretty fun to see. It's mostly stable. That brings me to my next point. The thing is mostly stable because the instructions are mostly straightforward and mostly correct and there aren't too many mistakes in there. There are a few mistakes. It's a custom Lego set. Uh, there are a lot of uh, axle differences that are very, very minor and a lot of like, you gotta get the right uh, pin pieces and the right um, beams and you gotta get the connections all just right, but a little trial and error, a little common sense, uh, you'll, you'll have this thing together in no time. If you have come here, if you've stumbled here and somehow made it this far into the video looking for some technical advice, uh, feel free to leave a question in the comments. I'll try to answer it, but um, basically just pay close attention in the instructions. I'll try to include some close-up shots of this thing to maybe uh, so you can see where you might have gone wrong, um, but there's no guarantee that I didn't go wrong in some places, hence the instability when I turn this thing on for too long. So yeah, overall fantastic product. I'd absolutely recommend getting this thing for yourself or for a friend if you or they are into this kind of thing. Again, pay close attention to those instructions, but the end result is very, very cool. So I've been Josh as a Josh. Build stuff on behalf of myself and Professor Jay. We'll see you next time.